Hi everyone, welcome back to Drusilla Dream and my weekly blog. As I mentioned before, I will not only be um, posting a written format of the blog, but I'm also going to be recording it for those of you who like to listen rather than to read. So the title of this week's blog is called Equanimity. It's about 6.30 a.m. on Monday morning and February has barreled into the Northeast U.S., bringing with it an abundance of white, fluffy cotton candy falling from the sky. I peeked outside when I got up and I noticed how the streetlights kind of illumined the crystalline flakes as they danced and swirled to the tempo of the wind. There was a vacillation kind of between the peacefulness of the softly falling snow in one moment and an image of fury and frenzy as the wind gusts interrupted the serenity of the scene. It got me thinking about the word equanimity and what that means for us in the dance of life that we all must learn. The definition of equanimity is mental or emotional stability or composure, especially under tension or strain. So let us think of ourselves as the sky. The sky is always the sky, right? It looks different and it changes appearance and displays kind of a attitude or hostility, if you will, with the weather that passes through the sky. Yet beneath the gray clouds, the torrential rain, the blustery wind, and sometimes treacherous storms, the sky is still blue. A bright, warm, sunny, and cloudless day might be defined as the sky's equanimity or state of equanimity. It's peaceful and stable. A gentle spring shower is a welcome respite sometimes from an overabundance of sunshine, which can happen. Sometimes we have a lot of sunny days in a row. We kind of long for one of those stay home and watch Netflix all day. So anyway, then we have all the hurricanes, the tornadoes, the nor'easters, and the winter storm snowstorms like we're having now. They bring a sense of fury and chaos at times, disrupting the sky's peacefulness for a while as they churn and blow off steam. Eventually the storms pass, blue skies return and equanimity settles back in. During the changing seasons and unpredictable weather, the sky does not change. Only what passes, passes through it does. So let us contemplate once again the term human being. If the sky, if we were are the sky, where do we find the beingness in relation to the sky and its passing weather patterns? Perhaps we can come to see the blue sky as the beingness. It's the consciousness and awareness we call the soul. The soul never changes in that it is always conscious and aware of what is happening in the life of the human that it has merged with and what storms it must weather. Nothing that happens in our lives can hurt the soul or destroy it. Our soul is eternal and will never die. So if the blue sky is our soul, where do we find the human part of the duo? Well, if it were actually the sky, we would not react to the storms because the sky does not think. It does not label the passing weather as good or bad. A rainy day is not a bad day. It's just a rainy day. Yet, we are not the sky. We're human beings who do think. That's what makes us unique and what can also cause us much confusion and pain. We judge our experiences or storms by what, what we label them. If we think thoughts like, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing that has ever happened to me. I will never survive this. We will most likely find ourselves in a state of emotional instability, anxiety, and stress. So what happened to us? The way I've come to understand this is that we kind of dove headfirst into the chaotic and painful experience. We abandoned the seat of our soul that simply stays conscious and aware of what is happening. By contrast, rather than reacting, our soul responds by allowing the experience to just pass through our lives and not take root in our minds and hearts so that we lose um, faith, innocence, and hope. So 
are we supposed to just ignore ignore the experience and sort of bury our head in the sand? Should we choose to just not deal with it and then re-engage with life once the experience is over? I don't think so. Instead, if we stay seated on our spiritual throne, so to speak, and view the experience from the soul's vantage point, we understand that though we don't like what we're going through, it's in our lives because it's trying to teach us something. We brought it into our lives to assist us in the awakening of our soul within the human experience. I want to repeat that. We brought it into our lives to assist us in awakening of our soul within the human experience. And it's okay to feel the emotions associated with difficult circumstances. Tears and heartache are unique to the human experience and one of the reasons souls continue to return here because they want to experience those emotions. Along with our greatest challenges, this is really important, so I'm going to really stress this. Along with the greatest of our challenges lies the most powerful opportunity to awaken and remember who we are and why we came here. The truth is no one, at least no one I have ever met, escapes adversity. It happens to all of us at one point or another. And each adversity has a lesson to teach us and an opportunity to self-correct. For example, because humans learn best through contrast, if we are betrayed, betrayed by others, it teaches us to look at our own capacity to betray others as well and thou to try to do our best to be loyal and truthful. If we find ourselves being harshly judged by others, we most likely are judging ourselves critically as well. So not only do we have an opportunity to self-correct where judging ourselves and others is concerned, we can also learn the importance of self-love and forgiveness too. All these lessons are clear pathways toward our soul's awakening, as well as the recovery of soul memories. Each time we stay conscious and aware through the storms of our lives, we strengthen our ability to fully embrace equanimity, which again is our capacity to remain emotionally and mentally stable during times of stress. You know, it's all about perception. Are we tensing up and becoming rigid to the point where the power of the storms eventually breaks us? Or do we stay calm, flexible, malleable, and fully present so that we may, though we may bend and sway with the wind and the rain of our storms, after they pass, we will be stronger, more grounded, more spiritually awakened than we were before. Our lives will become more and more soul-directed because we have remembered who we are. So who are we? At this moment in time, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. Infinitely, and this is infinitely, we remain the love that we were created with. We are eternal souls always seeking the path of love and peace. I will leave you now with one of my absolutely favorite quotes, and I believe it's from Wayne Dyer, but I'm not really sure, but I just love it. I say it all the time to myself and to others, to my children, and this is it. If we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. So I hope you liked this blog on equanimity. And again, I'd love to hear your comments or suggestions or questions or anything that you'd like to share with me. Um, you can find my contact information on the website on the contact page, and you can send me an email or a text message. I would love to hear from you. So I hope everyone has an absolutely magical day and stay warm and safe. And I wish you blessings. Namaste.